Hello, my soccer universe. A little bit later than usual, but you know, mornings on the weekend are a little bit slower in many, many cases. I was almost about to put a title for this video that we have another continental champion on the brink. But just the way that the, the, those games went, that I actually rewatched the highlights to, to remind myself. I mean, Fumbles, Flops and Failures is just a perfect title. Uh, I think not a single nation. Yes, they won a game. It was all the games, in, and I'm talking only African, uh, the African quad qualifiers. It was all, they, they were lost. They were not won, they were properly lost. So, uh, really, really interesting and weird uh, afternoon slash evening yesterday. Again, when you watch African national teams, it is not always the great action, but it is it's these fumble, uh, floppy moments that make it in a way uh, special. As I said, we have another continental champion uh, very much on the brink as Egypt beat Senegal. Um, in a little bit of, little bit, little bit of a stunner, but I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, talk about the game. But I first want to offer for the continental champion that already did not qualify, Italy. Uh, one thought that came to me yesterday, and I, I think there's something to it. Um, I mean, I listened to a podcast and then I, I think they didn't do the ar argument quite right. What they said is that Italy peaked at the Euros. Uh, they said they peaked at the groups, which I actually think that Italy probably peaked uh, in the quarterfinals against Belgium. But uh, be that as it may, yes, uh, it was the not con convincing the semifinal and the final. Um, we know that Spain was better in the semifinal and in the final, if England would have continued to push forward and not hold back, Italy may not have uh, gotten back into the game. Uh, be that as, as it may, I still maintain Italy were uh, the most enjoyable team to watch at this entire tournament. Uh, especially in the group stages and later, yeah, it became a bit of, of a slog, but given the overall body of work, I think Italy were deserved champions. However, and now here comes my point, uh, up until the tournament, uh, the, the tournament, Italy was really on a roll and you reach this absolute high and there's only one way from that high, you come down again. And going then straight back to qualifiers and then having even the distraction of the Nations League final four which it does not provide a spot at the World Cup, uh, I think did not help. Because every every nation that has just won a huge tournament, there's usually a little bit of a setback, a, year, a little bit where you need to readjust. And um, there I actually blame a little bit Coach Mancini, because at this is the point where I say, okay, those people have won me the Euros, but now let's freshen things up. Let's go immediately, get some hungry players in. And no one ever does that because we relied on those players to win it. But I think this is the success. This is the recipe to those success is that at that point you need to get, because those players have, have, have fun. You can still have them in, in his squad, but you need to refresh a little bit uh, to uh, keep things, things up. And you know, this mental block, yes, Italy have only to blame themselves again. Two penalties, a draw against um, and, and a draw against Bulgaria in a group that was rather easy. I, I, I think North Northern Ireland away from home, even Switzerland drew Julia. But this group is a group that Italy should have won easily, and you would have won it if you converted two penalties. So you need to take your chances. But on the other side, I definitely wanna suggest that um, there was not enough time to recover from this high of the Euros because it went bang, 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 bang. And then when you have just played Spain and England and you uh, uh, won against them in emotional draining circumstances in a penalty shootout, going then back to play uh, Switzerland and Bulgaria is not on the same level, especially since you just have brushed Switzerland away during the tournament. So um, I definitely think there's something to 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 that. Um, because uh, had the tournament happened in, in its original place, there would have been a Nations League in between. There would have been much more time to recover from from that. And for me, a prime example is actually the '98 France team that were, won that World Cup and were also uh, they were probably the most solid solid side. But I think I'm hard pressed to say that they were absolutely the best side. 
uh, because they didn't have anything up front and uh, and it's on yes they had a sedan and blah 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 but i think that uh france team was not necessarily the best team at uh, at, at this world cup and then after the tournament they won this tournament then they fell into a slump Euro, this is always forgotten the euro 2000 qualifying was always a struggle they almost did not qualify for that one or uh, at least had to go in the playoffs and then at the euros they kicked in the next gear and I think you can see this with almost every champion. Uh, you know, I don't Spain pro 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 being being the one exception, but there was always you always go down, and then if it goes bang 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 bang, you have not enough time to recover that. I think this is uh, don't want to make too big of a point out of it. Again, Italy can only blame themselves. There's nothing more that I can say about that. But I think there's a little bit to it that um, the scheduling did not work in Italy's favor uh, there at all. And, you know, they may well do well at the next Euros again. Hopefully there will be a more normal calendar. But uh, let's go back to Africa because, uh, you know, the first three games, I did, I mean, I saw now mostly highlights because I had other things to think and things to do. But again, <laughs> fumbles, flops and failures. It is just... It started, I mean, I, I think the best game of them all was actually the DRC Morocco game. And I actually saw it. I mean, I was I was a little surprised that they played on an artificial pitch. Uh, but a really raucous crowd. And they were already Morocco complaining that they're not treated treat too well. So, uh, you know, those playoffs, every little detail is used against the opponent to kind of con 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 complain. And, and uh, the DRC came out storming. And DRC is the only team, African Afri team in this playoffs that I don't have, which is a little, little bit of shame because I really like their jerseys, to be honest. Um, it's it's on my Africa list. Def 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 uh, pretty much on the, almost on the top, top top level to get a DRC shirt. They would have, would have been in the, at, at, at the AFCON. Vista gives them an early, but it was a really badly deflected by Roma Saiz, and that was kind of then the theme. Uh, the DRC was really the better team for the first half hour. Um, then Morocco came a little bit, little, little bit in. They were awarded a hands penalty that may uh, put high over the bar, and then right on the other side, the DRC probably should, should have made it 2 2 2 2 nil. In the end, it's an, another one of those quick uh, circumstances that Tissou Dali, who had just come on, uh, scores the 1-1 one, one equalizer. So a scare for Morocco, but probably Morocco will go through um, uh, there. Then, and from now on it was all downhill. Cameroon, Algeria, uh, another one. Camer Algeria were complaining that at the AFCON they had to play the games in Douala, the pitch was hor horrible, and blah, blah, blah. Where does Cam 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 Cameroon under Rigo Song, new coach, play that game? In Douala. Uh, the problem is that Algeria showed their true face more or less there and uh, largely controlled the game. I think Cameroon still have to find their own footing. I am very much in favor that African teams are coached by African coaches. And so taking a Rigo Batsong is, prob is probably the right thing. But um, it, it needs to develop and you need to give the guy time, which I'm not sure if he will even get in such a crazy environment. Um, Onana made one good save on Ben Slimani, but what he did in the fourth, fourth, fourth minute uh, from a Belaili, I think it was a free kick, no, the core, core, core kick. So, what was it? It came from kind of the same area. And then Ben Slimani had it, and Onana uh, it goes straight to him. He wants to tip it over the bar, it goes into in, in, in that. Onana is an absolute catastrophe since coming back from his suspension. Little bit. I can't understand it, but it's an absolute catastrophe what's happening uh, in, uh, there. And then the game completely died off and was very, very boring. And um, Cameron did not come in. Abu Bakr even had to come off. So the talismanic striker. Algeria looking really, really good in that one. Uh, in general, there was a theme that North African teams did very well. Do yourself a favor and watch the Mali Tunisia highlights. First of all, uh, a Jersey matchup that I really didn't did, didn't expect. I mean, not that it was bad, but uh, Mali in the green, then the yellow pants, and then socks that were from yellow to red against an all red Tunisia. It was not something I expected. I expected Tunisia in all white, but it worked. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But it, it looked weird. Um, Sisako, I think he wants to forget this day for the rest of his life. Uh, Musa Sisako. There was a play where the Mali defense were just 
playing the ball back and forth, left and right. You know, kind of the uh, they were a little bit put, slightly put under pressure by the Tunisian um, uh, attackers. But they wanted to play it around and play it out from from from, from back. And then Sisaka wants to play it back to the goalkeeper. Problem is the goalkeeper is not positioned right and it goes straight into his own net. And then just a few minutes later, four minutes, four, 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 four minutes later, um, uh, Tunisian striker comes out and Sisako uh, trips him up. It's a straight red card. And that decided the game. The Tunisia then only won one one nil. Actually, speaks that Mali did not crumble there. But no, you cannot do this. It is just <laughs> this is the worst type of defeat. I really. I have been to, Tun to Tunisia, so I have some sympathies for Tunisia. I even saw them play live at the World Cup in 2006. Um, I I don't have anything against, against Tunisia, but I really would love to see Mali at the World Cup. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen if you make such blunders. So again, another one. Um, same thing goes for Egypt Senegal. Yes, fourth minute, and this was probably the second best game of over once Senegal really could cool, could could get over. Uh, the um, uh, stuttering start, um, but it was Egypt that actually attacked Sans, as I know, the Cairo International sta is, is a Stadium with uh, Mohamed Salah unleashing a shot that goes on a crossbar, hits uh, Sis on the uh, on the upper thigh, and it goes into net. Another own goal. I mean, so far I actually think that the Morocco um, the uh, DRC goal should have been an own goal. We had a missed penalty so far, so keep track. Um, Onana with a major uh, goalkeeping blunder. We had an own goal um, at the Mali game. We had now another own goal. Although this is one that I would say, yeah, this was rather um, misfortunate to go in there. Uh, Senegal actually showed some spirit and had actually created chances, especially uh, late in the first and early in the second half. But then the game kind of uh, pe petered out. And the great thing about the European qualifiers is that it's one-off games, so uh, there needs to be this decision right there. However fair or unfair it might, might be, I think I had the feeling that Senegal uh, say, said late, okay, we'll take that game to um, the, uh, Dakar and then we'll probably uh, win against Egypt there because we know Senegal is the better team, but having a 1-0 deficit against Egypt uh, might not, no, 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 not busy. I mean, this was the big clash. We all know that. Uh, so yeah, I still would say Senegal's slight favorites, but Egypt definitely made a big dent there, and I would not be surprised if Egypt go through. So um, in all format matches, as I said, uh, Morocco have the advantage over the Congo. Uh, we have Algeria with a huge advantage over Cam Cameroon. We have Al um, Tunisia over Mali with Egypt over San Diego. So the North African team is doing really, really, really well. But there's at least one draw that will not give us a North African, but rather West African team, the Joel of Tower between Ghana and Nigeria. And I probably have already wasted too much breath on this game. There was just nothing. There was only one scene where there was a penalty given uh, potentially for Nigeria. But then there was also a foul in the build-up which VAR saw and then probably uh, correctly was uh, not given uh, because the Ghanaian inter defender falls over and takes the ball. Ghana was a little bit better in the first first and then the game just fell asleep. We'll take it to, I think, Lagos or Abuja. I don't, I, 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 I don't know where the return leg will be played. So that's Africa, and I want to finish the video. We had also, I was wondering what was happening with Argentina and Venezuela, but well, they played yesterday. And uh, Venezuela uh, were destroyed by Argentina with Nico Gonzalez after De Paul assists, make, making 1 0. Then De Paul assisting Di Maria, and then Di Maria assisting Messi, the last two incoming in the 79th and the 82nd. So uh, Argentina, anyway, already qual qual qualified, looking quite pretty there. So yeah. That was it from me from the African uh, qualifiers mostly. Uh, from I think what I'm gonna do is um, uh, you for sure will get tomorrow an unpacking video. Um, I'm not sure if I will do a video on what was happening in uh, South America. And if in South American CONCACAF something happened, you might get a short video on Monday of the, qual the, the, the qualifiers. And then all the other games are happening on Tuesday. So uh, Tuesday evening, so you will get at least one jersey video, if not two jersey with Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, and then wrap it all up on Wednesday, and then we'll go back to normal programming in many ways. Oh no, we have also a World Cup draw 
which is interesting. But I actually enjoy now that there's a little bit less soccer. So, um, you know, gives a bit time to, to, to get to other tasks uh, because this madman here is watching literally anything that's out there. So um, maybe it's better this way. Any case, please let, let, let me know what you thought about World Cup qualifying uh, yesterday and before. What, what do you think about my theory for Italy? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!